Hello guys, gals and non-binary people of YouTube. It is time to review one of the most filthy films I have ever seen. Fifty Shades has nothing compared to the absolute barrage of nostalgia porn visible in screen in Ready Player One. Directed by the one and only Steven Spielberg, which is based on a book of the same name that is by reputation, to put it bluntly, not good. Spielberg is my all-time favourite director, but even I admit he isn't as good as he used to be. His last five films are as follows. The Post, which my review can be found for in the description below, BFG, Bridges Spies, Lincoln and War Horse are all decent films, but they all play it safe, and there is a lack of pure grit like in Schindler's List, or true whimsical emotion like E.T., or a sense of adventure like Indiana Jones. This film, for all intents and purposes, should be nothing more than a cheap money-making nostalgia slogfest to take advantage of today's audience. But, my god, this is so much more. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is awesome. The film is made for Spielberg, and he is well and truly back to his whimsical best. Outside of the onslaught of nostalgia porn, there is plot revolving around the Oasis, which is an online virtual reality simulation where you can be whoever you want to be. And on a side note, I want nothing more for this to exist. This is quite literally the definition of why Gamers Game brought to the big screen. SAO, take note, this is how you do a virtual reality world. But take off the nostalgia goggles, is this a good film? Yes. After the first five minutes of this film, which hits you with so many pop culture references, you will be dead if you're playing a drinking game. The film slows down to a plate of puzzle solving and mystery, along with some Janine character interactions full of heart. The lead protagonist, Wade Watts, gamertag Percival, played by Ty Sheridan, is a very likeable orphan who relishes in the game, trying to find the free keys left by the game's creator, James Halliday, which, when found, will give ownership of the Oasis to the player that finds the keys. He, along with his clan members, H, Daito, Shoto and ally Artemis, are working together to find these keys before an evil corporation called IOI who want to fill the game with microtransactions and play-to-play -play contract to price every player out of the game. A highly relevant enemy for the game crowd. And that's the thing with this film. In this day and age when everything is doom and gloom, we have this time capsule accessible to many different walks of life. This is for the gamers, the weebs, the 90s kids, the 80s kids, the film fans, the lovers of old school cheesy music and the horror fanatics. All this film is missing is a few lightsabers and a stone cold Steve Austin dropping a hell yeah. This film will have so much buzz around it and it will be insane. Now that's not to say this film is for everyone because if you've never picked up a game before you won't have any idea what half the dialogue is talking about and there will always be the few that just won't get it. But if ever a film was to capture the pure, unadulterated community of the gaming world without the platform wars and the PC and console nonsense, this is absolutely perfect. Now let's actually talk about the Oasis. This world is beautiful. Spielberg does very well at making this world accessible to the neutral and Kaminsky once again shows why is one of the best cinematographers out there? This world is so easy to get lost in and you want to be there. It is just beautiful and even when it's just in the background, believe it or not, this film can be subtle with a fair amount of its references. Heaven help any YouTuber doing an easter egg video for this film. And can we talk about the in-game interfaces? It is really clever how they handle things like in-game currency, hidden secrets and inventory navigation. This feels like a game you could play, and with VR becoming a big thing recently, how long before the Oasis is a real thing? And the avatars are straight up Final Fantasy looking avatars, just one of the more interactive cinematic worlds I have seen in quite some time, and I absolutely love the Oasis.
Now, this film is by no means perfect. In fact, the villains are really underdeveloped and their motivations are only scratching the surface, but are never really explored. Also, there are some character dynamics that are just fully not explored. Wade and his aunt, for example, appear like they should have a relationship we should actually care about, but it just falls flat because we never really see them together. And there's a whole subplot between Wade and Artemis that feels really forced and generic. I won't go into what it is because this is a spoiler free review, but it just felt like a weak part of the story. Also, there was a certain Kubrick film that has an entire plot point revolving around it, and it feels beyond the homage and more of hero worshipping. But with Spielberg and Kubrick being best friends, I suppose this was Spielberg's way of paying tribute to his friend. Or maybe it's in the book. I couldn't say because I've not actually read the book. The puzzle solving, however, is clever. And I fully appreciated the messages this film addressed. Friendship, camaraderie, escapism and embracing reality. This is a love letter to the gaming community. This generation is one of bitterness and nostalgia. And why do we game but to escape reality and how crap the world really is? So, this film taking that escapism and applying it to the big screen. This is a perfect film to escape. And I hope to be playing in the Oasis one day. Honestly, this film has come out at the perfect time, at the right time period. Now, I don't have an MVP for this one, as I would only end up awarding it to Chucky or the Iron Giant. But in terms of who I thought did the best job, I would have to say Simon Pegg for somehow switching off his British accent. Well played, Simon. Well played. Overall, yes, it's a straight-up nostalgia porn fest with weak bad guys and some scenes that go over the top with referencing. But goddamn, if you do not feel good inside after watching this film, then there is no hope for you. This had heart, and it was Spielberg back at his whimsical best. I strongly recommend finding the biggest, most disgustingly pricey screen that you can find and buy the best seats in the house, because Ready Player One is a great cup of tea. And I challenge you to not smile at least once watching this. Honestly, go watch this. If you're feeling down in the dumps, watch this film. Once you do, please tell me what you think of it down in the comments below and hit that round subscribe button for more reviews coming all the time. This is that Spike Lee Podcast, signing off.